As the day ends and the sky grows dark, we begin to see the stars. From the city, we usually can see no more than a dozen or so stars at night. However, if there are no city lights, no smog, and no moon, we can see almost 3,000 stars above us. Because they are so far away, the stars appear to be at the same distance from us, as if they were all fixed on a giant dome above. In reality, they are at different distances, some closer, and some farther away. What then is the true layout of the stars? Is the universe deep, dark space with an unlimited number of stars? Or do they end at some point with just emptiness beyond? Many people have asked those questions. And in 1755, one man came up with the answer. The German philosopher Immanuel Kant. Zwischen all den Objekten der Natur, die zuerst untersucht wurden, hoffen wir die Entstehung des Among all the mysteries of nature, the origin of the system of the world, and the generation of heavenly bodies, together with the causes of their motions, is that which we may hope to see first thoroughly understood. The way to accomplish this is by analyzing the appearance of the sky by means of mathematics and the laws of physics. Whoever turns his eye to the starry heavens on a clear night will perceive a band of light produced by a multitude of stars at great distances. This band is called the Milky Way. It is an uninterrupted great circle that goes around the whole heavens. The force of gravity is universal. Every star attracts every other star. Consequently, they start to approach each other through their mutual gravitational pull. Sooner or later, all such stars will collapse into one giant mass. However, there is something else at work. If a whole cloud of stars is spinning slowly around a fixed axis, Centrifugal force will push them away from that axis. Stars along the axis feel no centrifugal force and fall freely, while stars falling towards the axis will be slowed down. This combined action of gravity and centrifugal force changes the shape of the cloud. The stars accumulate along a band, which is called the equatorial plane. If our sun is situated where most of the stars are, that is, in the equatorial plane, then we would see a circular zone in the sky swarming with stars. In other words, a Milky Way. However, if such a cloud of stars is seen from an immense distance, then it would appear as a faintly luminous patch on the sky, whose shape will appear circular if its plane is presented directly to the eye, and elliptical if it is seen from the side. Astronomers had observed such objects and were amazed by their strangeness. They described them as small luminous patches, only a little more brilliant than the dark backgrounds of the heavens. Presented in all quarters of the sky, they are indeed in the shape of ellipses. 
and their light is much feebler than that of any other object we can perceive in the heaven. In Greek, the word for milky is galactose. We may call those other milky waves by the name of galaxies. Is this the true constitution of the heavens? Do we live inside one such flattened swarm of stars? Are there indeed numerous others at great distances from us, like separate islands of stars? It was an astonishing view of the universe. Using only simple laws of mechanics to explain the appearance of the sky, Kant had created a hypothesis that opened the doors to a great new field of study, the science of cosmology. <laughs>